Have you ever met someone so mind-numbingly boring that just being in their presence for 15 seconds is enough to make your brain start leaking out of your ears? And just the thought of engaging with this person in conversation is about as appealing as being the centerpiece for a leper's bukkake. Mum, don't Google that. With that in mind, boring people can be hard work in real life and in fiction. So I'm here to help you, you aspiring writers out there, to help add layers to your character so your reader will not put your book down and start watching porn instead. And before I go any further, this video is actually the first request I've had, so shout out to Stacey or on Instagram or for SG Knight for this request. And as always, I don't have the tech yet to put words or anything up on screen, so grab your pen and paper, your Marmite and strawberry smoothie, and let's get down to broadening your characters. Step one, your character's journey. Believe it or not, your plot should be automatically adding layers to your character through experience, whether it's a hero's journey, a redemption arc, or them finding true love all within themselves. What you put your character through should shape them as an individual. And if by the end of your book, they wind up as they were at the beginning of the book, this can be a bit of a problem. An example I can give you this with my own writing is with both of my books, The Taste Beneath and Diseased Intentions and my main character, Ryan. At the end of the book, it's down to him whether he or not he has learned from his mistakes. Throughout the course of the first book, he is impulsive and can make decisions which sometimes do benefit him when it comes to thinking on his feet. But at the end of the book, a rash decision has fatal consequences. And shortly after that, he's given a decision or a choice to execute someone who has brought the vineyard pain. And whether or not, I'm not going to spoil it from you, how he performs this execution or whether or not he goes through with it is based down to him learning or taking on board everything that has been thrown at him so far. He has become a different person through these experiences that I have given him throughout the course of the first book. And at the end of Disease Intention as well, I decided to put him in the same position, but taking on board everything he had learned from the taste beneath, but the new experiences in Disease Intentions as well. And the choice that he makes in there on the surface level looks like he's displaying what people think or what he wants people to think that he's going to do. But underneath, he has an ulterior motive. He has learned so much throughout the course of the two books. And I think that has just helped strengthen his character so much and what I am taking into book three. So to the point, use your plot to make your character wiser and more experienced. And if you need to, traumatise him as well. I tend to find, particularly with the music that I listen to as well, people who talk about their trauma or their past experiences tend to be more exciting people to hang around. People with mundane pasts can literally put me to sleep just by telling me about their morning routine. Step two, use other characters. Human beings, we are all unique. Unless you're a Kanye West fan, then you are all just simple-minded and easily entertained. Every person you meet in real life will have different quirks, attitudes and phrases, which will draw a different response from you regarding who they are. An example of this is how I talk to my best friend when we're playing Call of Duty is not the same way I will talk to my nan. How I talk in the kitchen at work is not the same way I talk to a police officer, unless they're being a dick. The more interactions your character has, the more chance you have to express who they really are. And it doesn't even have to be verbally. Even the quiet, broody, stoic types, you can display through their actions of how they take on board situations. And you will just literally add layers to them just by having a back and forth with another person, verbally or not. More interactions will give your characters more life. Give yourself a test of this next time you're out in public, whether you're at the pub, the library, the strip club, your local satanic meeting, just sit and observe people and watch one person, how they interact with one person and then another. You will see changes within them. That's not even intentional, it's just who people are naturally. We have our own layers of how we talk to certain people. Step three, diversity. Now I know I've spoken a lot about forced pandering and identity politics, been shoehorned into modern day fiction but actual diversity will help improve your character's personality and their soul it will broaden them in ways that doesn't even seem to show on the surface level straight away how your character behaves around different identities beliefs cultures or in the case of sci-fi and fantasy species 
It will already implant layers onto your character without even trying, just the interactions they will have with different subcultures and different ways of looking at things. It's just down to you how you write that. In the case of two of my favourite movies of all time, Aliens and Predator, both of these movies have a mixed bag of genders and races. The reason that this works when it comes to telling the story is that the movie never actually makes a big deal out of it. How your character reacts to different backgrounds and ideologies is essential to their personality, but it should follow your story, not drive it. So have a guess what point number four, have a guess what point number four is. Yes, I'm an idiot, be inclusive to me. Step four, do not pander. I cannot stress this enough. Do not write a character that the current social climate dictates that you should. The reason why Disney is failing so hard at the moment and the reason that their stock shares have plummeted is because of the pandering. And it's why all of their remakes and all of their current projects, all the characters are so flat and so fucking boring. Write your characters, write your story, write your twists, write your turns, write your betrayals, write it uniquely to you. Anything else just to try and score some points or tick boxes just makes you sound like a preachy asshole. To give you an example of this, a trope which has become the forefront of mainstream media these days is to write the stunning and brave, all powerful female lead. What they don't realize is that this trope has existed for years and it worked without them having to shove their nails into it and drill it into our faces. Where this trope worked before is with characters like Ellen Ripley and Sarah Connor. The reason that this works is because of their character journey that defines their personality and what makes them interesting. What they both have to go through to become the actual badasses that they are is just so compelling and it's the reason why we love these characters so much. Examples of where the newer day strong female amazing lead doesn't work is Ray Palpatine from the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Just being told that she is awesome because she is awesome doesn't work. And more to the point, beating down every other male character just to elevate her doesn't work either. When you write your story or when you write your characters, you need to write them from what you believe from the heart and help the plot push them along and help them learn and help them grow. Do not just slam them in and say, this person is awesome, this person is part of this cultural heritage or whatever, you need to like them. That's not gonna work. You'd think I'd given up on talking about pandering, but I might not have to talk about it anymore after what South Park has done. Put a chick in it and make her lame and gay. Moving on to step five. This one's gonna be a bit confusing, but hear me out. Utilizing boring characters. As I mentioned in the, as I mentioned in the intro to this video that boring people do exist. So it's only logical that they would be in your book. It's how you use them and you might not have to have them in the frame or in the plot too much, but they could mean something to your main character. So you could use them as a motive. Kill them. Boring characters tend to be canon fodder just to get the kill count up or maybe they're hurt or kidnapped or something like that as a motive for your main character and it does actually work. If you need that spark to help your main character then move on to the next step. Utilising boring characters is the way to go. Plus it helps lower your character count and gives your protagonist a reason to kick ass. You can watch plenty of documentaries out there about how a certain good person might have lived a completely normal life, something bad happened, snap, bam, boom. Some of the stuff I do not condone, I don't condone. But when you slap your main character in the face with a certain trauma that you've utilized your boring character for, within those first five minutes or few pages, you can build so much up within your character. Step six, try not to rely too much on character quirks across everybody. As I've mentioned before, everyone is unique. So you might have a character that has a twitch. You might have a character that likes eating strawberry ice cream. Just do not make it their defining and definitive personality trait. In my books, I have a couple of character quirks for a few specific. And the one I'm gonna talk about when it comes to this character quirk is for someone called Dominic in my book. He has a habit of calling Ryan, my main character, boss. And this is purely because Dominic is the only black man on the vineyard and with Ryan being in charge, 
He keeps calling in boss to wind Ryan up and make him feel uncomfortable, like he's some kind of, you know, it's a bit of a running joke between them. The reason I keep doing it is because it does add levity to some situations and it does help drive the plot itself in a bit, but there has moments where I can reverse it back. So in Diseased Intentions, it's quite a somber moment. Ryan is leaving to go and hunt someone down and he leaves Dominic in charge and they have a bit of a hug and then Ryan has the chance to say, look after everyone, boss. He sort of, he sort of fires it back because uh, Dominic will call Ryan boss like all the time just to wind him up. But in serious situations, it goes out the window. The banter isn't there. The, he's not calling him boss anymore. It's down to business. It's just a character quirk that seems to have just... I think they're a very underrated duo. Um, Ryan got a lot of talking time with Drinker in the second book and obviously Ryan and Mikey and Doc in the first book. But yeah, Dominic just calling Ryan boss is just one of those things where it's now identifiable to the characters and I will be keep continuing it until maybe I kill one of them off. Maybe. Who knows? But this has been your boy Pembroke's own. I hope these tips have helped. It's a bit of a different list than what some other authors might do where they try and give you actual techniques. All the stuff I do is subjective, but I just try and teach it to you from a different sort of angle. It's the way that I look at things. Some authors might have a full-on character list where they you know, their own uh, spreadsheet or something like that, where it says this character is this, this, and this. And that's fine. If that's how you work, that's what works for you. I can't do that because it's a bit formulaic for me. So I rely on the experience that my characters go through to help mold them. As I said, I am part plotter, part panster. Panzer, Panda, Panzer Shrek. I don't give a fuck anymore. If you're new here, you're an aspiring writer or you like to hear the Beyond Fiction series I do, please subscribe. If you did enjoy this video or if you did learn anything from it, please leave a cheeky like. Anything questions wise that you have to ask, please put in the comments or message me on Instagram and I'll be returning to you at some point during mid next week where I'll be doing another podcast over the gaming footage with Team RPG. Show some love for Team RPG in the comments as well. And I will be talking about a very underrated sequel, which I know most of you have seen. And recently I've just realised it's one of my favourite movies of all time. Jurassic Park 2. But yep, this has been me. And as always, much love, take care and peace.